Hello and welcome to a new MGS version 5 tutorial. In this one we will be adding a boss. Uh, we will do two different methods. The first one is the uh, traditional way. Um, you are bringing a mesh, you know, like a character mesh and then you just import it and uh, add it to your um, to your enemy AI. The other one is if you have a, if you already have a character somewhere else and it's already programmed and it has a blueprint and it has a an, an MVP so probably will be a little bit annoying to destroy everything and bring just the mesh and start from scratch uh, so I will show you how to do both ways now the first way when you bring just the mesh itself you and uh, you retarget it with the UE4 skeleton this way is better in uh, in a sense that you will be able to use everything out of the box so you don't need to worry about retargeting all the animations or create any duplicates of animations or anything like that uh, however you will lose any progress that you have done uh, that you have done in the past the second way when you have a complete character that you want to bring as an uh, as a boss um, this one although you you know like the benefit is you keep all the work that you've done before and you don't need to worry about retargeting all the animations and stuff like that however you will have to create your own animations in terms of um, like hit reactions takedowns stuff like that so depending on whatever assets you have you might choose one way or another so i will show you both ways so for this example I'll be using the Paragon Countless. Now, I was able to take this character, take it to Blender, remove all the bones. Let me actually show you the original skeleton. So it has a lot of extra bones, you know, like these, you know, like all of those, those, and then you have the end, and you have all of those, you have tails, you have weapons, or even there, you name it, the face, a lot, uh, yeah, shotgun, blah, 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 here, the face, all of those, like all the way to here, holster, so yeah, you can see, you know, like, it's very complicated, and it's massive, if you try to retarget this to a UA4 skeleton, you will get a long list of errors, so, uh, the way that I did it, uh, I just took this mesh, exported like that, and then uh, as an FBX, then I went to Blender, deleted all the bones that I don't need, and then bring it back in. When I brought it back, it was like that. And that's the skeleton. I'm using basically the skeleton from MGS. It has a few more uh, bones like those those but they are very minimum and uh, they are not causing any troubles okay we still have the end but again because they are the end of the chain so they are not causing any problems all right so let's start by using this let's do the easy way first so basically you go to mgs MGS and then blueprints AI and you simply create a child of this AI character base let's call it I don't know let's call it BP boss here we go maybe we don't want the word child at the end BP boss base here we go that's a good one okay all what you need to do is select your mesh, the new one with the UE4 skeleton, and add it here. And that's pretty much it. Uh, maybe you need to lift it up a little bit. 80, maybe minus 70, somewhere around there. And this, I might do it maybe 25. Here we go. That's more like it. 
compile and save now while you're selecting while you are still selecting that you need to go to all data tables character and let's add a new actually we can just duplicate this guy and let's call it boss base so BP boss oops I have two hmm oh yeah because I created another one in there so I want this guy drop it in there and I want the health to be let's say 500 500 uh, the power also maybe 500 500 regeneration one regeneration one and let's call it miss boss here we go all right now remember this guy boss underscore base we need to go back to our to our boss here in the class default defaults if you scroll down under the my character you scroll down you will see here data table and it says character classes if not just select the character classes and then the row name you want to select the boss base finally make sure that you have the AI controller enemy that's the one all right now let's drag that drop it in there and now when we go in there we have our boss hopefully I will fight her at some point when I get rid of all of those guys Here we go. No. Here we go. Finally fighting her. Ah, they killed me. I'm coming back. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> Let's get the sword. Oops, missed. There we go. Killed her. So. <laughs> So that's a f that's a, a ridiculous boss fight. To be honest, I would probably need to give her a lot more, you know, uh, animations, health, attacks, you name it. She needs to be much much stronger. She needs to act like the boss. Anyway, so that's that's one way of doing it. Now let's do it the other way. So let's go to our countless, and then we go. I keep calling her countless. She's countess and go to here and then we go in her folder there we go so that's the character as you get it from the launcher like that it has everything in it so first thing first go to class settings and do ai base this is basically called reparenting nope not ai base ai character ai character base here we go you get everything in there we don't need the camera uh, if there is anything here nope good we don't need any of that I mean unless you do but uh, this is for for character you know like the inputs we don't need them we actually don't need those in this particular example but in your example maybe you need some of your code but I want to keep them just to have a reference for the attacks so I will delete these I will delete these 
and just keep those temporary just so I have a reference to the attacks that is associated with this character next let's go to the combat now that we have you know like parent reparent it to AI class so we have all the components now and there are several attacks here like 12 of them we don't need well we do need but we don't have anything more than three so let's delete everything else let's just keep only three of them there we go let's say before it crashes now I like to keep those open to know which one that I've done so far let's open the first one find it here and then bring it in there and let's rename it it's called uh, let's call it just attack one there we go attack one very descriptive now find where she does the damage about there so that's 0 0.2 obviously if you have a, if you have a suitable um, hit animation you can plug it in there as well but 0 0.2 yeah perfect and then around 0 0.6 which is already there that's fine we keep it as punch um, for now uh, I'm not quite sure about this I uh, probably want to change it to something more suitable for a sword because she has swords but this I will change it to sword Q so she will sound like she has a uh, she has swords uh, weapon although we are selecting punch there so we can keep it for punch if you create you know like two swords or whip, uh, specific weapons for her that is absolutely fine if you want to use the same animations but you want to put it on the sword but then you will have to create a sword uh, weapon inside your data table and then you go to the data table in here and then you go to startup inventory and you give her that uh, that uh, that sword yeah well for now I'm not going to do that I will just you know keep those as meshes keep it as punch and just change the sound so it will sound like a sword okay so that's attack one let's go to attack two select it and inside the animation Put it in there and let's have a look so she does the here we go damage around there 0 0.2 as well or around that time 0 0.25 okay and we wait until roughly there so 0 0.6 okay and same thing sword and we will go back to change the damage so let's find the third one put it in there double click it about yeah, around around this area so again 0 0.2 looks fine and 0 0.6 hmm cool and let's change this to sword now the damage this attack looks dangerous so I'll put 50 the other two I will put them on at 25 maybe 
Oh, I forgot to change the names to my very descriptive name. So this is attack 2. And this is attack 3. And the last one here, again 25. So we are basically done here. So in theory, this will work. We can delete that, we don't need it anymore. In theory, it's going to work now. Let's delete the old boss that we had. And let's go to this one. Put it in here. The animation is complaining. Let's see. Oh yeah, looking for the... There, there was an event for the attack. So we deleted those. We don't need them. Ah, yeah, one more thing. One more thing. It's the AI controller. We need to select the correct AI controller. If it's not selected, yep. So let's change this to a a BP underscore AI controller enemy. That's the one we are using. And let's just put this as war, uh, placed and spawned save and save everything now let's give it a try you will see a little thing that we need to adjust and that is the animations the walk animation but let's see if it works to start with so yeah here we go so she's following me let's hope that she will attack come on Ah, here we go. She's attacking. Oof, damn. She takes her time, but she does the attack. And she killed me. <laughs> All right. Now, she's sliding. So let's go back to the NM graph. And let's look inside the, the graph here. The reason why she's sliding is, to be honest, I'm not 100% familiar with the way that they do it in epic but if you look inside for example the idol it's like this and then if you look inside the uh, run it's this when you open it you expect you know like um, what do you call it uh, run animation and stuff like that yeah okay However, the way that it's going from idle to jog to this, which is again just an animation, uh, if you go in there, there is something called accelera accelerating, which we don't need. So I'll remove that one. And from jog to run, if you go inside here, that's fine. From there to here it says accelerating let's delete it and instead let's bring speed and let's say less or equals to zero that's how we will go to stop and then from stop this is empty so that's fine this is is accelerating delete it compile and save Maybe we, if we put this to 10, just in case. Let's see if she's still sliding. Hopefully she will start running or something. She's running, but she's still sliding. So you need to adjust the NMBP for that. We forgot one more step so if we go back here and we go to the character class 
Now this is the boss base, so now it's on that we want to change this to count Countess. We want to change it to Countess, and inside Countess we do the same thing as we done before. We go here and we change this to base balls or boss base. Compile and save. That's why her health was low. Let's have a look. Okay, now she has 500. Cool. Now the problem with this method is that now if I if I attack her, you see she doesn't have any hit reaction. You see, and when she attacks me, she does. I, I don't get the same hit reaction. And I'm dead. Oh, I killed her. Sweet. Okay, okay. But now you saw how how to do the, uh, the two ways wait I want to do the BAM oh you're still alive Boo. here we go now you're dead alright so now you've seen the two ways of adding a boss uh, from there what you need to do, what's the next step, let's say, is basically you go to the, your combat, adding more attacks and stuff like that. Make sure that you're adding the correct hit reaction for your characters. Um, what else? You might want to, you know, play around with the base stats, health, power, strength, and so on. Uh, if you want, as I said before, if you want, you can give her some startup inventory stuff. Uh, anything you want really but that's pretty much it you know like you can also give her thumbnail but that's pretty much it that's how you do it that's how you add a boss to your game and thank you very much for watching and I would like to see you on the next one have a lovely day and bye bye